Hey there, art nerds. Today I have a special treat for y'all. So I really enjoyed playing around with Paul Rubin's watercolors and these pretty excellent watercolors were recommended to me over on the paint box, my art centric discord server. So when I saw them out in the wild, out at David's Art Supply, I figured it was worth giving them a try. These are pretty excellent watercolors hence the big old thumbs up, and there are 36 colors in this set. So you guys have probably seen these on Amazon and AliExpress, and I purchased these after Maddie in the paint box sang its praises for being pretty dang decent. So this is a Chinese watercolor palette, Mei Liang Pigments, and as of this recording, it's $19.98 on Amazon. I paid quite a bit more because I did buy it from a local store. The colors in this set are white, lemon yellow, cad yellow hue, yellow orange, cad orange hue, cad red hue, vermilion, scarlet lake, crimson lake, crimson lake deep, alizarin crimson, permanent rose, purple lake mauve, dioxine violet, verditer blue, cerulean, I guess it's supposed to be cerulean blue hue, intense blue, cobalt blue, ultramarine, turkey blue, Prussian blue, Payne's gray, yellow green, sap green, hooker's green light, hooker's green deep, viridian hue, olive green, yellow ochre, raw sienna, burnt sienna, burnt umber, van dyke brown, sepia, and lamp black. And All right, friends, so unfortunately, I cannot read any form of Chinese. I know several of you guys can, and normally I'd ask for your help, but today I'm inviting my friend Google Translate onto the show so that we can maybe figure out what what's going on with this pretty excellent watercolor package. Let me just remove this price tag so it doesn't get... Ah, it's tearing some green sticker that I don't know why there's a green sticker. I'll just put that right there. Okay, so we're going to use the camera. Hit continue, hit allow, and then I guess we're gonna try. Hmm. Oh, I have it set going the wrong way. Okay. Now, I don't expect this to be a perfect translation. It's absolutely not, mmm, sports club, okay. Me life, division body water. At least this do, did say 36 colors. It's crazy to me how Google Translate can um, switch what it's saying as you tilt the camera. Okay, let's see if we can't get a better. So this is live tran beauty body water. Four bodies, interesting. It might be saying something about a lake. Let's try scanning it. Come on. Okay, or not. I'll just take some photos and load those instead. This is my, hi, this is my older phone. I look great. Now this is absolutely not a replacement for from having someone who can actually understand and read Chinese translate it. But I want immediate gratification. I want it now. I want it all. So let's see if we can't figure some of this out. Yes. Okay. Camera mode, please. Okay, all right, I guess you want to do it like this. I want to import it.
Y'all saw me. Just take the pictures. Oh, it's gonna make me rotate him. So that says color watercolor. This says May Lane Country Watercolor. Let me know, by the way, how bad this is. <laughs> Let me know in the comments what a terrible job this is doing. Or if it's doing a good job. I am always kind of curious. Okay. Down here. What are you saying? Okay. May Liang Pigment. Okay. So maybe that's the brand. I think that is actually the brand. Mei Liang Solid Transparent Watercolor. Mei Liang Pigment. Okay, all right, it's coming together now. It is made of gum Arabic, finely ground with pigments and natural, no! And natural air dried after multiple fillings. Makes sense. It has high color density, good transparency. It is soluble in water and easy to dip. Cool. No, don't want you. Well, actually, I technically do because I can't get back to the other picture. Okay, because we'd only done like half the, the paragraph here. Okay, how to use. When using the watercolor pin dipped in water and then wet the body powder, you can pick color and paint. The, the flip cover can be used as a color palette. Okay, all right, that's all. This seems like it's probably a student grade set but we'll talk about this more later this is also the only part I'm kind of doing live with you guys and that's just because I thought it would be kind of fun okay so this is the back of the box information Shanghai Owen Shanghuan sorry someone let me know please art materials co ID co limited maybe can I, can I, nope. Wow. Okay. And then what, all this down here, right? Free, oh, and that's just company information. That's cool, okay. I'm, I'm excited that this is actually working. I remember when I was translating uh, Gensai watercolor pans. <laughs> this did not work nearly as well, but that was several years ago. So it's really cool that it seems like it's kind of improved somewhat. Oh, there's so much text, but basically I just want to see if it's like the color information. Yeah. Okay. So it's just the color information in Chinese. That's cool. And then one last thing. I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. You know what I mean? So it does look like, yeah, it just looks like it's the light fast information in several languages. So that's pretty cool. Thank you, Google. So these are made by Shanghai Alwin Painting Materials Co. Limited. So they're the same people as Paul Rubens. And just kind of unboxing this and checking out the palette, this feels more like a student or hobbyist grain line to one of their more professional Paul Rubens lines. And I really like Paul Rubens tube watercolors. And at some point, it'd be cool to compare all three, the Paul Rubens tubes, the Paul Rubens half pans, and the Mei Liang pigments. So the packaging is a cardboard sleeve. Inside is a metal palette. There's a plastic tray to protect our paints. Now, supposedly these are poured paints, but I kind of have my doubts about that. And they do come with a small water brush as well as this fairly flimsy plastic tray to hold all the half pans. It is a mint green pastel metal palette. And um, these half 
pans are not like individual plastic replaceable half pans. I feel like these were probably extruded rather than poor just given the setup. It does include a plastic water brush, a protective sleeve, and an informational packet. And I feel like maybe these might have been poured in a silicone mold and then popped out when dry and then glued into the tray. There's also a 24 piece set available. Okay, we are switching back to live because we've got an informational packet here that is worth checking out. Also getting what is to me conflicting information because here it says Shanghai Aowen Painting Materials Co. Limited, but Google Translate was also calling it Meiliang uh, Pigments. Not sure if that's just like a name, like, you know, you have Kotman, you have Rembrandt, you have like different names for watercolors, or if it's a brand name or what. I'm sure you guys could let me know. We're not gonna do the live thing. Oh, it's me again. Hi guys, looking so good. So good, okay. Get a good picture of the text. Isn't it handy that I have two phones to play with? Import. Because I have found that Google Translate does the best from like static photos. Hmm. All of it, please. No, 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 I'm not done, Google. I just had to move my finger. Okay. Shanghai Elwin Painting Materials Co. Limited is committed to the production of the most trusted materials for Chinese artists. Shanghai Elwin Painting Materials Co. Limited is dedicated. Okay. Uh, dedicated to providing high quality painting materials and related knowledge for artists and learning artists of paint. At the same time, Owen Painting Paper, Chang Key Painting Book, Ah uh, Mei Liang Material, and Rubens. Oh, do they? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they do Paul Rubens. Okay. So I would guess this is their student line and Paul Rubens is their more professional line. Oh, I need to dig up that half pan Paul Rubens set so I can do a head to head. Um, and Paul Rubens artist grade pigments have been highly recognized by many well-known artists at home and abroad as a professional company that integrates R&D, production, and sales. Since 2011, Wan, the comprehensive professional art material supplier of the Chinese Academy of Art and China Oil Painting Institute. It is the only cooperative brand of Yoke Harding materials and repair workspace technology. All parties, British paints, Brooks, Belgian paints, surface indicators must go through the materials and restoration work of the Chinese Oil Painting Academy, Ruxiang Kata Swish Pencil, Rolk Method, strict expen wow, sorry, can't read tonight, strict inspection and supervision by the French handicraft room before the watercolor paper can be marked, Labriano, Italian painting paper, Behi, Spanish watercolor paper, and other world-renowned art brands in China. While cooperating with the world-renowned art material suppliers, the company learned about the historical knowledge of many painting materials and finally chose Brooks with a long history for technical cooperation and inheritance. Technical guidance of Brooks, fourth generation heir. Ah, that's what this picture is. That's cool beans. I'm gonna send this to myself and this will be down in the description below for you guys as well. In case my reading did not make sense. So something that I really like about Paul Rubens is they offer cute packaging options like light blue, light pink, and aqua. No joke, sometimes it's just nice to have cute art supplies. So here is our half pans. You can see they do look extruded rather than poured. And we've got some really bright colors in here, which kind of makes me feel like there might be some optical brighteners involved. Now, optical brighteners are added to watercolors so that the mass tone or the half pan color is brighter and more appealing. But there's one way to find out. Let's go ahead and swatch these. And I'm going to be swatching on the Blick Studio Cotton Rag watercolor paper today. This is a paper I've used for a lot of these swatches and I really like it. I'm going to use a black Copic marker to help with the opacity test. And 
We're drawing a lot of lines here because we've got 36 colors to swatch today. So colors seem to be bright and vibrant, pretty saturated, but they may also contain a lot of optical brighteners. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm just going to go ahead and pre-activate these paints. And all I'm doing is I'm dropping a little bit of water on each half pan and giving it a moment to soak in. And this is going to give the paints the best chance possible to really shine. So what I'm doing is I'm doing a graduated color swatch and then I'm going to be doing a full saturation color swatch. So I'm going to use some water about halfway through to see if we can get any sort of gradation. And this is a great chance to see if colors sediment out when there's more water added. So what I'm going to do is I am going to swatch each row and then I'm going to replace the water with a fresh cup of water because I did notice that the water seems to muddy pretty fast, which is a pretty good indication that there are optical brighteners added into these paints. But so far they activate quickly and the colors are really bright and saturated. They're very vibrant. But again, as I said, probably contain a lot of optical brighteners. If you let water sit on the paints too long, and this is going to be apparent in row two and three, they do get kind of goopy. They get kind of, they just kind of glob onto your paintbrush and it can be a little more difficult to control the paint itself. So you can see how bright red that water was. There's a lot of paint, but there's also a lot of optical brighteners in there. And I think swatching watercolors is just super relaxing. It's one of my favorite painting adjacent, but not painting exactly tasks to do when I'm reviewing art supplies. There's just something really satisfying about working my way through a palette and checking out all the new colors. Now for this palette, I'm at a bit of a challenge because I want to come up with a field test that does the color gamut because we get 36 colors here. Does the color gamut justice but isn't going to just turn to mud because you know honestly I'm pretty sure these are basically student grade paints. Very nice student grade paints. Quite affordable at under $20 student grade paints but still student grade paints and should probably be handled the same way I would handle student grade paints. You can get a lot out of cheap watercolors as long as you know what you're dealing with. All right, so on to the third row. And the third row is more yellow greens and earth tones. So at this point, I noticed that most of the colors are pretty saturated, but the burnt sienna is really weak, which is unusual because I've gotten some really good burnt siennas in the past. Viridian is usually the one that's kind of iffy for me. The colors are finely granulated, but a bit more gritty than their Paul Rubens counterparts. So if you're paying the $20 Amazon price, I definitely think these are worth 20 bucks so far. And heck, they're even all right for about $45. But at $45, which is what I paid at David's Art Supply, that's kind of encroaching on Paul Rubin's full price territory. So if you're going to pay that much, I say just go ahead and get the full price Paul Rubin's tubes. I really enjoy them. I highly recommend them. And I'll link them in the cards and in the description. They're made by the same company, so I feel zero guilt recommending that you just go ahead and spend a little bit extra money on these. Our third and final cup of water. So I have a clean cup of water. I've allowed these to dry overnight and now I'm doing the lift test. Now for the lift test, I'm using a Cotman flat synthetic brush. I'm scrubbing a little bit, but not too much. And then dabbing up with a paper towel. I'm basically checking to see how easily these watercolors lift, how staining they are and whether or not they have the tendency to turn to mud. A little bit later on in this review, I'm gonna do a full on mud test and I'll explain that when I get to it. But basically I've kind of developed up this way of testing watercolors over the years because it's going to let me know how to handle these paints in the future. I like to throw a bunch of things at them before I even do the field test because that's going to help me 
figure out how to use these to their best ability when doing the field test and that allows me to critique them I feel the most fairly if I know what their weaknesses are if I know what their strengths are I can try to find something that showcases both and that will give you guys the most information possible I have zero affiliation with Paul Rubens this was paid for out of pocket by a local mom and pop art supply store and I just enjoy reviewing art supplies. I enjoy reviewing watercolors. I'm a watercolor comic artist. You guys can check out my comic at 7inchcara.com. You can read the first seven chapters for free. Or if you like my art and you want to support it, you can also purchase your very own copies of Volume 1 and Volume 2 from the Natto Shop. And I'll link all that down in the description below. But my love of reviewing art supplies comes from painting comics and making comics. All right, so here are all of our lift test swatches they are fairly prone to lifting but no more so than other watercolor brands and they're also pretty staining most of them leave at least some residue on the paper so you're not going to be able to lift them all the way back to paper white but then again it's less likely to turn to mud on your paper when you're doing multiple layers and now we just need to remove our swatches from the block so we can do our mud test. Now, the mud test is where I try to get these colors to turn to mud over three layers. So I'm basically applying three layers of watercolor over the course of three days to this cotton rag block. And I allow it to dry more than overnight, basically for 24 hours in between layers because I really do want to give it the best chance possible. But if it's going to turn to mud, if colors are prone to lifting, if colors are prone to just turning to mud on the paper, if they don't layer well, I want to know that before I even do the field test because that's going to change how I handle the paints. So for this mud test, I decided to just go row by row for each day. So each day, each layer gets a different row of watercolor. So we're starting out with our reds and our yellows. I'm going to move this to another room, allow it to dry fully. You guys can see it's dry here. So here is day two, layer two. We're going to do our second layer here. And you see I spritz it with water to activate it and give it a chance to soak in. So this is going to be primarily purples, a lot of blues, and some greens. Now I noticed some really interesting granulation with these colors similar to the Paul Rubens tubes and that's something I loved about the Paul Rubens tubes so I think that's really nice. I'm really excited to maybe play around with that granulation in the field test. The colors do dry far less intense than their Paul Rubens counterparts but I didn't notice so much or rather I didn't notice much if any color reactivation so while they're not gonna dry as intense and saturated as their more professional counterparts they are still very stuck to the paper you're not going to get mud with these so so far it seems like these don't turn to mud which is my biggest complaint with more opaque watercolors and with student grade watercolors and you can see some of that gorgeous granulation here i bet you would see even more beautiful granulation if you were painting on the paul rubens cotton rag paper because that paper loves granulation i'll link that in the description below as well as in the cards and I hope you guys will check it out. All right, so for day three, again, I spritzed the pans with water to activate and I noticed a surprising and impressive amount of granulation with these paints. The paints seem to layer rather than turn to mud, which is wonderful and surprising from paints that I assume are student grade. You know, to be honest, I had really low expectations for this at first. In fact, I blew these paints off for a long time. It wasn't until Maddie, a fellow watercolor artist whose art I respect, it wasn't until she gave the good word on these that I decided to even check them out. So if you're paying about $20 for these, I definitely think they're a pretty good deal. And you can find them for around that price on Amazon as well as on AliExpress. If you're paying more though, I recommend just go ahead and spend that money on the Paul Rubens tubes. Same company, even more intense, beautiful color. I don't think you guys will be disappointed. So reviews like this one are made possible thank 
possible thanks to the generosity of my amazing patrons on Patreon. If you like the work that I do here and you want to help support it, please join me over on Patreon at patreon.com slash natosoup. My amazing patrons not only get early access to reviews like this one, but they also get access from here on to my tutorials, which I'm going to be sharing on Coffee and on Patreon. Thank you guys so much for your support. So, what are my thoughts on the Mei Liang half pans? Well, I don't think these are poured half pans, but I might be wrong. They definitely strike me as extruded half pans. But I think for student grade watercolors, they are fantastic. If you buy these at the $20 price point, you're definitely going to get your money's worth. And honestly, these are some of my favorite student grade watercolors. And I, they might even be a notch above the Como Rebbe watercolors that I use all the time. So I really enjoy this palette. The form factor is small and fairly compact. And I'm not a big fan of water brushes, but I do appreciate that they included one in the set so that you can start painting basically right away. Now I did test these out on cotton rag paper and cotton rag does handle differently than cellulose paper. So this is the best case scenario for these paints. And if you're painting on a cellulose paper, your mileage might vary. So let me know down in the comments below if you're using a less expensive cellulose paper, how you like handle or how these paints handle on that paper for you. I had a lot of fun working on this first look, this unbox and swatch review, but I hope you guys will stick around and keep an eye out for part two, the field test, where I actually put these to the test, painting and illustration. That'll be out soon, but as I mentioned earlier, my amazing art nerds on Patreon will get it first. What were your experiences with the Mei Liang palette? Did you love it? Do you not like it so much? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you're looking for more watercolor reviews, I've got a huge playlist to help you shop with confidence. So I'm gonna link that in the cards and in the description below. Now, one thing I did notice as I was wrapping up this review, literally as I was picking up for this review, and you guys will see it in a moment, is that one of the half pans fell out and it definitely seems like extruded paint and not a poured paint. So if anybody has any videos of the manufacturing process for these watercolors, please send them my way. So I really enjoyed reviewing the Mei Liang paints. My only cons are that at $45, it's a little bit expensive, but I think they're a great buy for a student grade paint. And if you're paying the $20 price tag, that's way more appropriate. And it definitely makes them a strong contender for an excellent student grade paint. I'm really excited to see them actually available in the US and I hope Paul Rubens products become more accessible here in the US because honestly, Paul Rubens, y'all are onto something. Y'all are making some quality products. I've been working on some of their watercolor papers and I have to say, I really like them. So here is where I'm talking about with the extruded half pan. That does not seem like a poured half pan to me. And with this kind of palette, you're not really gonna do poured half pans anyway because that's gonna make the manufacturing process take a whole lot longer than it really warrants. If you're new, I hope you'll consider subscribing. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button and I hope this was helpful, useful, and informative for you guys. I'll see you guys again soon. Have a wonderful day, guys. Bye. Thank you.